Welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a little scene that's a lot of fun. I believe you'll enjoy it. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got up here. I have my regular old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas, but you use any size as convenient. And today I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white is still wet. We depend on that being wet through the entire painting. So with that in mind, let's just go up here and, and just have some fun. Let's just put a little color. If we put nothing down here but snow, this will end up being the shadows. And with that, we can go in here and let's just begin deciding maybe there's some little bushes that live far back here in the background somewhere. I want to start at the base of the bush and then blend upward so it'll get lighter and lighter toward the top. That way the shadows are automatically on the bottom. There, something about like so. And sometimes you can take this little brush and just give it a little, mm, see, just push. It'll make the indication of a little tree that lives back here somewhere. Speaking of trees, <laughs> this is where my little squirrel pea pod would love to live. I got a, I got a little bit of footage I want to show you and share with you today. I'll just put in this background while you're looking. Isn't he the cutest little devil that you've ever seen? This is Peapod, my little pocket squirrel. He's been with me for a long time. But isn't he precious? Oh, rascals love fresh corn. Tell you what, you could, you could have a whole farm and feed these. I must have 15 or 20 of them that I've probably raised and turned loose that live around the house and they expect me to continue to feed them. And old Bobby's a soft touch. How can you turn something like that down? I'm telling you, how can you turn him down? I would sit and play with them almost continually if I could. I have four or five around the house that I'm raising right now. By the time you see this, they'll probably be grown and released because we don't keep, we don't keep wild animals. All we do is raise them. I work with a lot of the people who take care of injured and orphaned animals. We just sort of help them out. Then we turn little rascals loose. But they don't make very good pets. They're better just to look at and enjoy. All right. That pea pod can eat up some corn, can he? There. Okay. I'm just putting in a few little background trees here while you're watching the pea pod there. But look at that little rascal. I'd say he's only a couple of months old when that was made. All right. There. Okay, so that gives us this nice little background and all we did was take the top corner of the brush and just tap it in, something like so. Now maybe in our world, there lives a couple little evergreens. Let's take some Prussian blue, crimson, black. And let's decide in our world, maybe where a little tree lives. Big decision time, right there. See, you just drop it in. I'm gonna push sort of upward here, make it a little. This tree will have some upward limbs on it. There we go. Sometimes we make them with, a, with old arms hanging down, sometimes with them up. It's up to you, you decide. You decide. Maybe, yeah, tell you what, got a friend lives right there. Got a friend. There. I've lived in Alaska for over a dozen years and you've become so impressed with winter and, and all of the beautiful scenery in winter. I know it sounds cold when you hear the temperature in Alaska, but you become used to it very rapidly and it becomes interesting. I'll tell you what let's do. Maybe, yeah, why not? It's our world. We put one over here too. Just like so. Just push upward. Give it a little upward bend. There. We'll come back and put a few highlights on these. But all we're doing is putting the base color in now. The back of the tree, if you want to call it that. Then we'll come back and we'll put the front of the tree in. Or the highlights. I need a little more paint here. Didn't mix up enough. Let's take a black Prussian blue and a lizard crimson. All right. There we are now. I want another one right there too. These two are really friendly. <laughs> there we are. But you put as many trees in your world as you want. 
each one of us, each one of us will see nature through different eyes. And that's the way you should paint it, is the way you see it. Get an old two inch brush, let's have some fun. We'll take just plain titanium white. Snow is one of the easier things to paint in this technique. So all you gotta do is basically decide where your snow lives and put it in. Allow it to pick up a little of that tree color because that makes a shadow for you automatically. Automatically. Allow the paint to work. This is certainly the lazy man's way of painting. There we go. And let's go up in here and let's just begin dancing in some little things here and there. Just some little, little pretty areas. There, something about like that. I'm just putting some paint on the canvas. I'll come back with a, maybe we'll use a little blender brush. It's so soft and nice and does beautiful things. We'll come back and just blend all this together and you'll be shocked at what you can achieve doing nothing more than this. There. Okay, let me grab a little blender. Now these little blenders are just as soft, tender, tender as a mother's love, as my father used to say. There. And with my mother, that was certainly true. She certainly was a beautiful lady. Miss her very much. There we are. Maybe over here on the other side, we'll have just a little bit right over here. See there? That easy. There you go. You put it wherever you think it should be. And we can go back in here and pick up a little bit of color here and there. And I'm just going to take this little brush and begin defining some of these little shapes. You can actually paint with this little blender. And what makes this blender unique, it has a round handle. You can spin it and it's fatter than most blender brushes. There we go. You can spin it. Sometimes that's very important when you're painting to be able to turn the brush. See there though, how easy that is. Now we can go back to our other two inch brush, hit the dark color on it. We'll just use that old tree color, it's sort of bluish. Maybe, yeah, perfect place. Perfect place here. Let's pull down a little thing like so. Maybe we'll have a little water in here. All right, where does it go? It just wanders around and has a good time in here. We don't know exactly where it goes yet. We'll decide that later. There. One thing that's so fantastic about this is that very quickly you learn to compose as you paint. There. That way you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what to paint before you start. Because painting is quite easy. Anybody can learn to paint very quickly. What becomes difficult is not how to paint, but what to paint. Now I'm going to go into a fan brush here. And we'll take the old fan brush, and we'll just pull that down. Look, make a little bank right there. That easy. Winter scenes are probably the easiest ones to paint in this technique. Probably the easiest and maybe the most fun. There we go. We don't even know where that's going to go yet. Don't care. We'll make that decision when the time comes. Mm, yeah, see there? There's another little, little peninsula or whatever you want to call it. Pokes out there, has a good time. You just put them wherever you want them. And, 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 here's your bravery test. Let's put one right in here. But see, so you can make that little, maybe it's a little stream. It's all dried up or froze or something. It goes way back into the distance there. That easy. That easy. Shoot, I tell you what, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, Bob, if you've painted with me before, this would be a perfect place to have a little cabin back here. So I'm gonna have me a little cabin. Let's just sort of scrape out a basic shape. Maybe right there. All I'm doing is removing excess paint. And it sort of gives you an idea of what your little house is gonna look like by scraping it out first. So take a little Van Dyke Brown, start right in here. And all we're doing, a little dark sand in there too. All we're doing is blocking it in. Just blocking in a little bit of color. We're not worried about much of anything at this point. Just blocking it in. There we are. 
We'll come back and highlight him in a minute. Over in here. Choo -choo. And we take a little titanium white, dark sienna, Van Dyke brown, mix it together, and we'll make us a very nice little, little wood looking color here. Don't overmix the color though. Don't overmix it. Leave it marbled like that. So you have all kinds of things happening in there. A little roll of paint. And we can go right up in here. No pressure. No pressure. All just to look like old, old wood. It's old like me. Tired. There. See there? No pressure. Absolutely no pressure at all. Now over on this side, not as much light would be hitting it. Much darker. Just enough that it shows up a little bit. And take a little Van Dyke. Make the indication here and there of a few little boards that you can just see the indication. That's all we're looking for. Just need a door. Got to have a way to get in and out of this little cabin. There we go. Got us a door. There. Now we need a roof. So let's have snow on the roof. There we go. A little more paint. Firm it up a little. There. A little bit, bit on this side. Something about like that. There we are. Now let's do a cabinectomy. I've decided I'm going to put a big tree right there on the side. So there's no use putting paint there that we have to paint over. Now then, let's go back to our big old fan brush that we had. Bravery test. This is it. We have a big tree. It goes right off the canvas. Right off the canvas. There it goes. Just a big old evergreen tree that lives right here. Man, this is a monster tree. Let's see, now we're going to go right through the cabin. Now sometimes going through all of this paint that's already on here, you might need to add a little paint thinner to this dark color so it'll go over the top of that mixing together quite so bad. Just a little paint thinner. There we are. Maybe it comes right on down like that. Doesn't much matter. I'm going to take my little script liner brush, a little touch of the liquid white, and we'll just pull down some little icicles here and there. There. Boy, that is cold. Whew. That one is cold. Now, I'm going to take white, and let's put a few little highlights on some of these little evergreens. I use thalo blue just because it's a warmer blue, and it'll stand out. It will stand out against that Prussian blue that's up there. Other than that, no other reason. There, a little more of the blue. We'll come right in here. Put a few highlights on this little tree. We don't want them left out. There. Don't kill all your dark. Sometimes it's almost an, a natural tendency. It gets working so well that you just end up destroying all the dark. Keep this basically dark in here. Evergreens are quite dark in, in value. Mm. All right, we could even shoot. It's our world. Maybe we can see the indication of a second tree here. It just lives right behind there. I really just want to fill this edge up. Let me go back to our brush that has the thalo blue in it. Little touch of thalo blue. Put the indication of a few little highlights on him. He lives in the background, so we don't care much about him. There. All right. Now then, we've got to make some big decisions in here. Let's take a one-inch brush. We'll use some of that same dark color. It really doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And let's go in here. And just pop in some little, some little duders right there. Tell you what, when we got that, let's go on the other side. Maybe there's a few over here too. It's our world. We can put them wherever we want them. Another one inch brush. And I have several of each brush. I'm going to go right through, dip it into liquid white, go right through titanium white. 
And with that, we'll just make the indication of some little, some little snow-covered bushes that live right in here. A little bit of paint thinner, a little bit of the brown. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, why not? Right in here. Chum, chum, chum. There's a big old tree right there, wherever you want them. There. But that's, if your paint doesn't flow, add more paint thinner. If it's thin enough, it'll flow right off your brush. It will literally just flow right off the brush. It's very simple. Very, very simple. There. And let's go on the other side over here. Maybe over in here there's a few little sticks and twigs. Just some little things that live in here. You decide. You decide. Shoot, maybe back in here. Maybe there's even a little tree. It lives far away back here. There. These little evergreens here. I didn't put any highlights on, so let's drop a little highlight on them. We don't want them left out. A little bit of the thalo blue. See there? That's all there is to it. Shoot, I think we're about to the point we got to finish painting. Let's take a little red and sign this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. And as I say, if you have time, send us a photograph of your attempts. We would love to see them. There. I think we're going to call that one done. I really hope you've enjoyed this little painting from all of us here. I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend.